Right. So rather than pausing, I actually, wait, this is going to be a problem like this to go like that. Okay. So rather than um, pausing, I made the mistake of turning it off. So we're going to have the shortest little video ever. Okay. But so when I'm looking at a case, all right, so here's my case and then I have these head notes. Okay. So this is what it looks off of Westlaw. It's easier for me to do this than to do a separate video with a book. Okay. So we have my case and then we have these head notes. So head notes, you see, it's a little paragraph that, um, comes from someone reading the case and kind of coming up with the, the, um, rulings of law or discussions of law by the court. Okay. And you'll see each head note has a topic. So criminal law 110, and then there's a key. See, it's like a little key and that's your key number. So if I'm interested in cases that talk about Miranda warnings and when they're required, like in custody and subject to interrogation, Oh, I am going to go to 110, which is for criminal law, key number 4114 in my digest and find other cases with that same topic and key number. Okay, so criminal law is 1110, key number 41123 for this one, which talks about what in custody means. So that's just generally like how they look. Let me get back to my slideshow. Okay, so it's based, it's topic based. There is a table of cases at the end. There is a descriptive word index. There's a defendant plaintiff table. And then when we're trying to, you know, it's a, it's a bound book. So to update it, they have these little pocket parts at the end. So let me show you what. Um, they look like I'm going to try to pause this again rather than turn it off. Okay. Sorry. I wanted to find my photos of what a digest looks like. Okay. So here is, of course it's going to take a while. Okay. So here is what my Illinois digest looks like. So um, there's topics. Okay. So this would be child custody or here's my key number 275 to child support 399. So if I had a key number for child custody 280, I would pull up this book 6C. Okay. I have, I just have a random smattering here, so they're not all in order, but that's kind of how they would look. So you'd go to your topic by alphabetically and then find your key number to find the specific book that you're looking for. Now the table of cases we looked at before I had a little video on it a few weeks back, but the table of cases, there'll be a few volumes of that. So if I know a case name, I'm going to go pull the, um, go to the table of cases and find the site for that, uh, case with the name, with the title, you know, the case name, and then I can go you know, pull it from the Illinois decision reporters. All right. So all of that. Okay. Descriptive word index, we would have a table of cases and then, um, it would be supplemented. Okay. So head notes, like I talked about, there are little brief statements of legal topics and holdings in a case. Each head note will correspond to one rule of law and each head note is assigned a topic name and a key number cases that stand for that same legal principle will be assigned the same topic and key number. So child custody 275 will have the same legal principle for any cases that are under there. Um, cases usually have more than one, you know, one, more than one head note, as we can see in that Anthony versus Florida, right? So here's a bunch on criminal law. They're mostly on criminal law. See, this one's on double jeopardy, um, obstructing justice, right? That's the statute that was dealt with in Anthony versus Florida. So you'll have more than one 
head note and therefore more than one topic and key number. Um, so in books, just like here, the head note will appear after the caption. Let me show you here. Here's my caption, my holdings, and then um, you have your little summary and disposition, and then you have it. But before the actual case starts, so you have to go through all of that head note nonsense, and then here, here's where the text of this the case starts. Um, all right, so let me go to Hamie's. I'm all over the place. I'm going Hamie's. Uh, here it is. Okay. So page 196. It should be a screenshot of what it would look like. All right, so this is just like a case. This would be a case in a book. I was showing you a case from Westlaw. Okay, 113 Supreme Court Reporter, page 365 or 366 here. Um, I have my case name and caption. I have my little summary. I have my disposition. And then I have my head notes where I have my topic. So this one's criminal law, 1134, sub three, arrest, arrest. Okay, so that's kind of what it would look like in the, in the um, case. So I'm reading this case. Uh, and I was like, you know what, this, what are we on here? Appeal. Oh, they're not even giving me one that, that matches. If I see that this case looks really good, I'm going to go to the digest and look for the book with arrest. And then they, that would correspond to the key number 63.59. And I'll find other cases listed there on that same topic. So here's what a digest would look like, a page of a digest. Okay, so you have appeal and error with that key number, and then you'll have the little summary. Um, now this is more of what it's gonna look like. So searches and seizures, 47.1. And look at these little paragraphs, and then I look through them and I say, oh, this one's helpful. Let me write down this site. This one's helpful. Let me look down this site. Okay. And these are all, um, look like they're all federal cases, but if make sure you're looking in the right jurisdiction and pulling up the cases that um, are the right ones for you. Okay. So you're like, oh, this one's good. I'm going to write down this 113 Supreme Court 538 or whatever version, reporter version I have, because it's got all the parallel sites there. And I can go pull that case and read it. Um, so that's how I would do it. Um, okay. So Hamie's, if I read Minnesota versus Dickerson and I'm interested in the plain view doctrine, I can go to the digest and look under searches and seizures 47.1. And there I will find other cases which contain the same key number and further my research. Okay, um, head notes are proprietary publishing stuff. So West has its own digest system, has its own editors writing their own head notes. So if I'm looking at head notes from Lexis or another publisher, they are not, they're not gonna have the same key numbers, they're gonna be different. So when you're doing digest research, make sure your digest matches the reporter that you're looking for, otherwise the, um, head notes and key numbers aren't going to match. So lawyer's edition is from Lexis. It's not going to match the digest for the Supreme Court reporter. Official reporters won't have head notes because they are just pull, putting out what the judge is right. So if I have the U.S. reporter, they're not going to have head notes because they don't have editors doing that. So it's harder to do your research using an official reporter. Okay, make sure it matches. Digest matches the reporter that you need. Um, and make sure it's in the jurisdiction that you need. Okay, so don't look in the Supreme Court to di digest for an Illinois issue. You're going to go to the Illinois Digest for that. Um, okay, page 215. Let me hear. 215. Well, that's. That's not really what I want. 
I'm out of the wrong chapter. Let me file friend from here. I have my book in front of me. That might be an easier way to look at it. Let's try 200. So if you're interested in kind of what the organization of the topics are, your little for West, they have their own key number system. They have an outline of the law. So real generally, things related to people, property, contracts, towards crimes, remedies, government. Okay, so under people, you have all of this stuff, and then it goes on and on and on. So here we were looking at, you know, adoption, attorney and client. We saw the one for child custody and child support, and you see how it's alphabetical. Okay, so that's how the digest system will work. So the big one, the main one is the west one but there are other digests so we have the century digest system the decennial digest system so you just have to know that digests relate to the books that they are indexing okay we're going to have our state ones for west federal and supreme court look at all of these different digests okay and here's a little um insert okay what digest you use for uh, what case reporter you're, you have in stock. Okay. Okay, so using digests. So we, we talked about how to use it if you have a case and you see a, key, uh, a head note with a topic and key number in your case. Another way is before you have even a case. You just have a general area of law. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the descriptive word index. It's just an alphabetical listing. You're like, oh, I'm interested in child custody. You go to the index. You go to C. You look for child custody. Under child custody, what specific things are you looking for? Then you can find it. And you can say, all right, now I need child custody key number 62. Then you go to the digest volume that says child custody, you go to key number 62, and then you can look at the cases cited therein and find ones that are helpful to you. Um, always make sure to update them with, you know, if there's pocket parts or supplemental materials at the back, soft covered materials at the back. Um, and in our library, I think we stopped updating it. So there are no pocket parts or supplemental materials, but in the real world, you would look for that. Um, one thing that I think we talked about this in um, the secondary sources chapter, if you don't know how to use something in front of the books, they have what's called the prefatory material, right? It's in the preface. Check that in the front of the book. Um, and it tells you what the purpose of the book is, the coverage of the book. And then it also gives you directions on using the book properly. So if you're stuck, go to the first couple of pages and look at the preface and it'll help you. Okay, so how do we use digests if we have a case? Okay, we talked about this. Minnesota versus Dickerson. We look to the head notes that are relevant to our issue. We write down the topic and key, uh, key number of those head notes, and then we find the digest, locate the topic and number in the digest, and then write down the citations of other cases, pull and read those other cases. Okay, so if we don't have a case for starting with issues or facts. We look, we think of our keywords. We look, I'm going to sneeze. I guess I didn't, didn't have time to pause it for the sneeze. Keywords, then you get our proper topic and numbers from the index. Then we go to the digest, look at the topic number in the digest, read the case citations under the topic and number, pull the cases that are helpful to us. Okay, head note number, description, cases, briefs. Okay, and then sometimes you'll find a head note that's like the perfect head note, and there's going to be no cases under that has I know it's happened to me it's very frustrating um you might have to look around in the general area and see if you find something close 
Okay. Um, West is the biggest head note system. There's other, the American Digest system also has the decennial digest. Um, but really what we would deal with would be the West Digest system. State Digest and Harper, we have the Illinois Digest. There's also re regional digest. So if we had like the Northeastern Reporter, we'd have the Northeastern Digest. So for specific reporters, there will be specific digests. Our Illinois Digest covers everything in Illinois, both appellate court and um, Supreme Court. Okay, starting from the case. Oh, we did this. Okay, see if there's any... We had a case that's on point. Is there a good head note? We go to the digest with that topic and key number and find other relevant cases there. Start from the idea. You can go to the index, then browse the head notes, find cases with relevant head notes, go pull those cases. Make sure you go to supplements and pocket parts, check the prefatory material to see what's in the digest. And maybe if you need help using it, check the prefatory material. Oh, this is, I think I just got this from the West website. So this is an example, not what we have, but for the Federal Practice Digest. Okay, we have these, it's topic key number system, multi-volume, key numbers for abandoned and lost property would bring, begin at one and end when it ends. Okay, so alphabetically there by topic. Um We start from abandoned and lost property to zoning and planning, and they're arranged alphabetically. You can tell I didn't do this because it's fancy. Um, each topic has many subtopics, and each point of law is assigned a key number. So look at all of those legal topics, 400, 95,000 key numbers. It's a lot of stuff. Okay, so here is what, under aliens, we have our, our topic immigration key number 39 to 59. And then we can go there and see what's helpful to us. Offenses against immigration laws. Okay, unlawful entry. And then we would go to this key number 56 and find that. Okay, descriptive word index is one way to find cases on my issue. By topic, just generally, go pull up child custody and see what's there. If you have a good case, locate that case in a table of cases or <laughs> the plaintiff dependent table and then find um, the uh, head note number, the topic and key number to find other cases. Okay, here, if I'm looking just generally from aliens, I would go to ADE 80, 80 to find that um, materials under aliens right there, transporting illegal aliens. So then I know it's aliens key number 56. Okay, and then here I'm looking through aliens key number 56 and look at all of these little cases. Okay, look, it tells you what jurisdiction it is. That's um, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Illinois, 1994. So it's a federal, these are all federal cases. Obviously it's the Federal Practice Digest, but if I wanted it in a specific jurisdiction, it'll tell me here. So these are my little summaries and I read through them I'm like, oh, this is a good case. Then I write down the site and then I go pull it. Um, wait, I want to previous it a little bit. Previous, previous. Okay, so we have our main volume, and then how do we update it? We look to the pocket parts, then there's update um, pamphlets to update it. And there might be advanced sheets, like little loose leaf service things. Okay, so here's the pocket part that would go at the end of aliens. Um, they'll have things that are more current than those. So if you want newer cases, you're going, going to look at the pocket part. Um, and then routinely they have these little soft covered books that they would be filed at the end 
to that are more current than the main volume or the pocket parts. So if you are at a library where they have books and it's kept up to date, you want to look at the pocket part and then these up to date pamphlets. And then here's our advanced sheet paperback book. Okay, so that's just making sure everything's current. Um, make sure your digest matches your court and your jurisdiction. Um, this is also super important. Don't cite those headnotes as law. You have to then go look in the case. Sometimes the headnotes don't appropriately quote what's in there. They're doing a little summary. So this is just some person in Minnesota, because West is headquartered in Minnesota, who's reading through these cases and coming up with what they think they, the law is. So don't quote headnotes. Head notes. Those are not law. That's somebody else's interpretation of the law. If you're quoting something, go to the the text of the case itself. Table of cases, we've looked at this before. It's the alphabetical listing of all cases found in the digest. You have you can do it by both plaintiff or defendant name. So that's if you have the case name and not the site, and you're gonna be doing that in your homework, which we'll do um, with the books. Um, Lexis and Westlaw, you can search if you um, for Westlaw, really, if you're looking at the West Digest, you can search by that. Key numbers are only valid on Westlaw. Lexis has will, its own um, digest system, which we'll talk about when we do computer-assisted legal research next summer, in the summer, which will be the last time I'll be offering that as a separate class. So that's it. It's kind of quick. Um, we'll get hands-on and uh, use the materials in the lab for the 01 section. That'll be March 17th. And if anybody in the B section is available, they can sign up to go on March 17th as well. And for the other people in B, we'll, we'll do that um, after spring break. So you guys have a great day and I will chat with, chat with you at the lab and then the next mo module.